you guys, Jaden here back with another video. Today I want to talk about my personal favorite film camera at the moment, and that is going to be this one. This is the Canon Prima AS1. This one was released in the European market. Uh, I believe the SureShot A1 is the American version, and if you're in Japan or in that area, uh, yours is going to be the Autoboy D5. Now there's a couple versions. Uh, mine's the one that is waterproof, as you can see by the fish on the front right here, right here on the dial. And my version also doesn't have the little like date back, which I like that better because let's be real, none of these cameras are gonna be up to date to 2023 anyways. Hello you guys, editing Jaden here. Um, I'm gonna link below an article that I was reading when I was doing research on buying this camera. Uh, it's called Matt Loves Cameras. Amazing article, gives you all the technical specs, years, dates, f-stops, everything that you're gonna need to know technical wise about the camera and his ideas. I'm gonna drop that below, like I said, and you guys go show it some love, read it. It's an amazing read, uh, very informative too. Let's go ahead and jump into a couple cons. Um, some of it could be my model, but then the other comment is gonna be about every type of electronic point and shoot. So let's go ahead and get the first one out of the way. This camera one day will die on you and it'll be too expensive to fix. You're better off buying a whole new one. That is the way it is with all electronic point and shoots, even the very expensive Contax D2s, the Nikon 35 Ti's, so like that cool titanium one with the little dials on top. Eventually all these cameras will brick and die and they'll just be a very fancy paperweight. But this one, since it goes from about 80 to $120, you're not out a whole lot of money. If anything, you'd be more bummed that you're out the memories that this thing had in it. Now with that being said, this did die on me once because I was using it in heavy water usage, which brings me to another reason. Um, your seals might not be as good because this camera was started in 1994 and I'm not quite 100% sure on the ending of manufacturer dates. Now a couple things to look out for the camera is since these are waterproof cameras, make sure the seals are good. Um, a good telltale sign is the little screws on the inside right here, here, and then a couple other places like here and here. These will be rusted. Mine came rusted. If you're gonna be buying one, take a look at that. Ask the seller on eBay or wherever to look inside the camera. Um, if any of those are rusted, that means you probably did have a moisture leak of some kind. Mine did, and actually mine died for a little bit. Uh, I took it to a water park and it just up and died. Now, the water and moisture did end up inside the camera. You can still kind of see like a little bit of spots right there. Um, but if you don't want that to happen to you, then don't fully submerge this in water. I have no doubts that this thing could make it through rain or anything like that, or even just a couple splashes here and there. Another thing about this camera is that the little latch door right here can fail. Uh, I've seen a few of these on eBay. Uh, right here, you open it up, and that's how the camera opens. And then sometimes when you close it, see, it doesn't go fully back down. So what I do is you hold it closed. Sometimes it'll click in, or you just pull it down like normal. Um, even if that fails, I don't think that you'll have a bad time loading and unloading the film and the camera should work as it should. One last thing you should look for when uh, looking at one of these is does it have fungus or some type of hazing in there? Because mine does and most of the time it doesn't show up in photos. This is actually recent, like I said, because I took it in a lot of water um, under the ocean, you know, taking photos everywhere. Putting it in my pocket in my board shorts when I'm at the beach, like. I won't be doing that anymore, but I still won't be shy to get this thing wet because like I said, the pricing is good on these. You can just go ahead and grab another one. So let's go ahead and talk batteries because this camera needs one. And I bought a two pack of these Duracell Lithium 123 batteries. It's a CR17345S 3 volt, I believe. Here, let me get the focus on that. I bought it in a two pack off of Amazon. I've shot a total of nine rolls through this camera so far and I haven't needed a battery yet, but when that day does come, I have another one on deck ready to go, so you should be good. And it's just inserted at the bottom right here. You take a like a quarter or whatever, you turn it, it pops open, you push the battery in, close it back up. That's it. So on the top here of the camera, you have your shutter button, your timer, which mine never worked as is ever, and then your shot counter. It starts on S and then obviously goes all the way up to 31. And then when you're through all your shots, the camera will unwind itself and you can just pop it back open. One more thing I forgot to mention, now this could be just my model. Um, sometimes when I put a roll in and I pull the leader over, right? Put it in where it's supposed to go, which is right here. When you close the camera, it should auto wind all the way to first frame, but sometimes mine won't detect that there's film in there. I'm not sure why, but my easy fix is, is I'll load the film in, put it in, pull it over, and then what I'll do actually is I will shoot a frame 
And then while the thing is moving, I'll close it mid, mid shot. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate how I'll do that. So I'll do this, put, put the thing in, get her over, hold it like this. And then when it goes to wind, it'll wind to the first frame and it's been loaded. As far as the settings on the dial, you have the off mode, which is right here. You have your auto mode, so it'll dictate if you need a flash or don't need a flash. You have your underwater mode, which it'll close focus and it's pretty much usually a flash. You have your top, your almost top mode actually right here, which is your flash on all the time. And then my favorite one, if you're shooting street, all the way flash off all the time. So you don't take a photo of something, someone thinks something's weird and then you get jumped. <laughs> Again, with this camera being basically water resistant, um, it, you get that red ring. So if you can't, haven't had the chance to have a luxury lens from Canon, uh, you do now technically. And this camera is more than a tenth cheaper than any of the other fancy point and shoots. And in my opinion, it blows those out of the water because if this thing dies, you're out 80 to $120. Whereas if any of those other ones die, you're out like a grand, 1500. And the thing about this camera is you can shoot street with this and no one looks at you funny. No one thinks anything of this camera. You could pull it out in restaurants, basically just damn near anywhere and no one's gonna care. But that's enough of me talking about the camera. Uh, I'm going to display probably almost 150 photos for you that I've taken with my current favorite camera as far as film goes. Uh, you enjoy the photos and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.